Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Sheltenham Racecourse here on Friday. It is March the 15th, 2019. I'm going to look at almost all the races on the program from Sheltenham, but before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world, and also join me tomorrow for one of my favorite races of the year. It's the Midlands Grand National from Utahxter, and I've always loved that race. Very long uh, staying kind of race over the chases, and and uh, I think it's a wide open race, so uh, join me tomorrow for some previews and selections for that card. And also, while I'm here promoting, um, next week or two weeks from now is the start of the British Flat season, and uh, from Doncaster with Lincoln Day, and I'm going to look at the those stakes races, and also I believe that same weekend is the Dubai World Cup, and join me for tips and previews for that fixture from late on. Final day of the Shelton Festival today. Um, you know, it it's, goes by so quickly, but um, I think today's car is a great one. We have a great Gold Cup this year, and um, let's get to the action. Like I said, I'm going to look, look at almost all the races except the fifth race, the 410, the Fox Hunter Chase, because it's just a wide open race, and I have no I fucking idea what to do there, and I wouldn't feel confident giving out a tip that I'm not 100% behind. So well, we're just going to skip that race. So let's get to the first race, the 130 from Shelton, which is the Grade 1 J. CB Triumph Hurdle. Grade 1 race for Class 1 horses going for a purse of $160,000. Race for juvenile 4 year olds. Field of 14 horses going 3,400 meters. Or, third, or two miles and one-eighth over the hurdle course. Top selection here. I'm going to go with the 12 horse Sir Eric. I know he's the even money favorite, but I think he'll run well. I'm going to go 12-1-5 in the Tri-Cash Trifecta. 12-1-5, Tri-Cash, Trifecta, that's the top three, basically. The top selection is a 12-horse, um, Sir Eric, four-year-old Colt by Camelot. This horse has a great staying, you know, over the flat staying. This horse looks like he'd be a monster, but they're running him over the jumps today. Mark Walsh uh, gets them out for Joseph Ryan. Uh, John McManus owns this one. The horse's most recent outing came the 3rd of February at Leopardstown, two miles in the grade one uh, I Ireland Springs Juvenile Hurdle, and the horse won by six. He had six other rivals that day, but this horse jumped well, and it was a very good race there. Before then, a juvenile maiden hurdle Leopardstown, two miles December the 27th. The horse won by a neck there, and um, it was the horse's first over the, the, the hurdles, and he did everything right. Jumped well, and, uh, you know, it was a good effort. And then before that, at Ascot, two miles in the British Long Distance Cup, he finished third by two and a half lengths beyond Stradivarius, who's probably the best stayer in the world. He, you know, he, he closed up well at the end. He stayed the distance well. Like I said, and you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me seeing this horse in some of the staying, flat staying races over the summer, uh, even if he wins today. He still looks like he'd be a monster stayer. But, um, you know, his two jump races have been well. I think he's going to stay forever in a day. And uh, I, I think he's going to really run well. So at even money, even though he's still such a low price, I like him a lot, so I'll take him as a top selection. So to recount my selections for the first, 130 from Sheltonham. It's the grade one JCB Triumph Hurdle. Going to go with the 12 horse, Sir Eric. Going to go 12 one five in the Tri-Cash Trifecta. Let's get... The second race, the 210 from Sheltonham. It is the Grade 3 County Handicap Hurdle. It's a Grade 3 event for Class 1 horses going for a purse of $128,000. Race for 4-year-olds and upwards. We have an overflow field of 26 horses going 3,400 meters or 2 miles and 1 eighth over the hurdle course. Since this is a very wide open race with a large field size, I'll give you two horses that I think can win. The two horses I would use here, um, both also could be used in the place pot or the um, Lucky 50 teams. The two horses I would use would be the four horse Mr. Adjudicator and the number 15 horse Cut the Mustard. So four 15 here, but the first horse I'll talk about is the four horse Mr. Adjudicator. Five row gilding by Camacho. Paul Town and gets a leg of Foley Mullins. His horse is running off a break, but his, you know, he's run some good races in the past. Most recently at Nace on the 10th of November on good ground, similar to what you're going to see today. Two miles in the grade three fishery lane hurdle. The horse finished second by length by Esquad Elaine. You know, this horse jumped well, lacked a little closing kick at the end, but he, he got around the race course well. Before that, at Punchestown last year, two miles in the four year old hurdle, the grade one four year old hurdle, he Fit his uh, second by nine lengths behind, uh, or excuse me, three lengths behind Sadlier, and uh, he jumped well. Just that had lacked a little bit of closing kick, but again, he jumped well during the main portion of the race. And then he, I think he ran, he, he ran here last year at Cheltenham, and I think he ran a sneaky good second place finish in the two mile one eighth grade one JCB Triumph Hurdle, where he finished second by one three quarter lengths behind Farkless. He jumped well, he got up the hill well. It was a decent effort. And then the Irish Spring Juvenile Hurdle at Leopardstown in 2018, he won by one quarter lengths. He had no headgear on that day, and it. 
it was the uh, good thing for this horse because he had a great turn of foot. He jumped well, and it was a monster race. I think here at 15-1, he's a horse not to throw out. I think he's live, and uh, I, I know I'll definitely use him here. Along with the 15 horse, cut, cut the mustard. Um, I do like mustard uh, here in, in my house. Me and my dad, uh, me and my dad both like mustard, and um, I think we have like like six different kinds of mustard. We have Dijon, which is my favorite. We have. Uh, I think we have English mustard, we have uh, American deli mustard, uh, we have French whole grain mustard, we have German sweet mustard, we have a whole bunch of stupid mustards in this house. Um, <laughs> problem is, every, me and my dad like uh, mustard, everybody else in this house hates it. That's for another day. But the 15 horse custom to cut the mustard, some real mare by Al Nemex. Um, Philly, the mayor taking on boys, but I think she can get the job done. No Feely gets to mount. Uh, no Feely, I believe, is retiring at the end of the season. Uh, he's had a great year, a great career. Willie Mullins trains this one. This horse is most recent out. It came the 3rd of February at Leopardstown, two miles and one quarter in the mayor's handicap hurdle, and the horse finished second by two lengths. They gave him blinkers for that day, and he really concentrated. He jumped well, had a decent turn of foot. It, it was a good run. Before that, the 27th of December at Leopardstown, two miles in the handicap hurdle, he finished second by three lengths. He had a low weight. Again, he jumped well, closed up well. It was a good effort. And then he ran a fairy house in a two-mile handicap hurdle off the break. He wasn't 100% fit, and he finished seventh by five and a half lengths. Again, it's tough of horse. He just couldn't get into it. But I think coming here to Sheltonham has been on the up and up with a good weight. I really think this horse should do well. Gets the headgear on again. Watch out for her at 15 to 1. So to recap my selection for the second, the 210 from Sheldon, it's a grade 3 county handicap hurdle. I'll use the 4 horse Mr. Adjudicator, and the I'll also use the 15 horse Cut the Mustard. So 415. I'll probably do an exacta box or a forecast box, but I'll most definitely use both of them in the, in the place pod. So now let's get to race number three. The third race, the 250 from Sheltonham, it's the Grade 1 Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. It's a Grade 1 event going for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $167,000. Race for novice 4-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 20 horses going 3 miles over the hurdle course. My top selection here, I'm going to go to the 16 horse Rhinestone. I'm going to go 16-4 in the forecast exacta. That's basically the top two. 16-4. Top selection is a 16 horse Rhinestone. 6-year-old six, six gallon by Mom. Deju, probably the best stayer of this uh, this current uh, century. Um, Mark Walsh uh, gets the leg up on this one for Joseph O'Brien. The horse's most recent outing came the 2nd of February at Leopardstown, two miles three quarters in the grade one. Uh, and Nathaniel Lacey's partner solicitors, 50,000 Sheldon voters for staff hurdle. And the um, the horse finished second by half length. It was his first time getting the longer trip, and he loved it. He jumped well, had a great turn of foot. He, he stayed the distance, and I think he's another horse, like the other O'Brien horse in the earlier race. He's another horse. I think he's going to stay for ages. Um, you know, I, I, he, that last one was a very good run. Before that Navin on the uh, yielding ground on the 16th of December, two and a half miles in the grade two Navin novice hurdle. The horse finished fourth by 14 likes. He didn't weaken out of it, but he didn't quicken up out of it either. He just stayed the distance. He, he ran decently that day. And then the maiden hurdle at Nace, two miles on November the 10th. The horse won by a nose. Hit a high weight. He got the victory that day, but it wasn't the most impressive run. Had a little bit too many mistakes for my liking. He has run here at Sheldon in the past. Ran the champion bumper last year, and he finished ninth by 11 likes at five to one. We're probably still waiting for him to finish. He just ran crap, um, and then he uh, he ran a, a, a Leopardstown 2018 the bumper where he finished second, and he won his first race of Thurls on a bumper very easily. I think you know the longer trip's gonna suit in, and uh, you know his last one is very nice. His low weight of 159 pounds. I think he's a good horse here, and I'll take him at 16 to one at uh, at 12 to one. Um, he's a horse I'm gonna be really going back to the. Uh, I'm gonna be backing him quite a bit today as a bet as a best bet. So watch out. So to recap my selection for the third, the 250 from Sheldon, it's the Grade 1 Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. I'll take the 16 horse Rhinestone. I'll go 16 4 in the forecast exacta. And like I said, the 16 horse Rhinestone will be my best bet of the day. So now let's get to the featured fourth race from Shelton. Race number four, the featured 330 from Sheltonham. It's the Grade 1 Sheltonham Gold Cup. Grade 1 race going for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $800,000. Race for 5-year-olds and upwards. Field of 16 horses going 3 miles and 1 quarter on the chase course. This is kind of, you know, the equivalent of the Breeders' Cup Classic, I think, for the flat here in America. And this is a great, great Gold Cup this year. Um, very wide open race. 
So I'll give you three horses I think can win, and I'll put them all into an exact box, see if we get lucky. And they're all horses that can be definitely used in the place pot. The three horses I'll use here would be the three horse Bell Show. I'll definitely use the five horse Klein's Days of O. I think he's a live horse. And a bit of a price here would be the 11 horse Might Bite. So three, five, three, five, eleven here in the, um, in the uh, exact box forecast box, and I'll use them all in the place pot. Um, but the first horse I'll talk about is the three horse Bell Show, nine year old gelding by King's Theatre. Ruby Walsh picks up the mount for Willie Mullins. The horse's most recent out came the 3rd of February at Leopardstown, three miles in the Grade One Irish Gold Cup. The horse won by a nose there, two to one. He jumped all, he got there in the nick of time. It was a very good run there. Before that at Leopardstown, three miles in the Grade One Savile's Chase, he finished fourth by eight and three quarter lengths there, and he just never got going, never quickened up. Up. First off the break, maybe he need the race, and then a punches town last year and the punches town gold cup. He won by one and three uh, by three quarters length. He jumped well, great turn of foot. He had a great run in, which um, really suit him. He had a, he, he ran well, and then before that, a fair house and a handicap chase last April. He finished fourth by three quarters length, but he uh, had a few you know errors that day, and it kind of interfered with a few horses. So he's downgraded to fifth through a disqualification. What can you do? He just didn't keep the straight course. But um, I think coming here to Sheldon um, on dry ground today drier ground than usual it's gonna be good the going you should like that and uh, i think he's a live horse he's run his best races on good ground so watch out for him at eight to one with ruby walsh up ruby walsh at eight to one you don't see that a lot so when you see it you better go for it go to the bank with it another horse i think will run well but a little bit sm a lot smaller odds would be the five horse clans days of o seven year old gelling by cap guard here um Eric Hoping gets like a for Paul Nichols. The horse's most recent out came the 16th of February at Ascot, three miles in the grade two Denman Chase. Um, you know, the horse that day won by 11, and, uh, you know, he just won for fun. It was a paid workout. It was a very good race. Are they trying to go the Native River route with this horse? Native River, who won this race last year, used the Denman Chase to, uh, to, 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 to um, you know, use the Denman Chase as a prep race for this race to win it. You know, he, he won the Denman Chase in 20. Uh, 2018 by a dozen. This horse won by 11, so he didn't get that. He, he, them, uh, you know, uh, Native River just ran that little bit of a better race, but this horse, he he, he ran well too um, in 2019. So let's see, do they they're going the same route? Let's see if it's good for them. I think it will be. Before the um, the Denman Chase, this horse ran the King George at Kempton on Boxing Day, three miles December the 26th, and the horse won by one and a half lengths at 12 to one. This horse had a coming out party. This horse jumped well, and it was a very good race, beating the Old Man Thistle. He's running back in this one today, but I think this will crack his you know, a little past his prime. And then before that, Haydock in the Betfair chase. He finished fourth by eight and three quarter lengths there. And he didn't have the best of trips. First off the break, he probably needed the race. And then he ran the bull chase at Aintree last year. We finished third by ten lengths. And again, he, he just never got that good closing kick at the end. He's going to like the drier ground. I think he's coming to this race very well. And uh, I think he's peaking at the right time. So four to one, I'll use him. But it's not the best price in the world in this very wide open large race. And I'll definitely use the 11 horse. It might bite also. A 10 year old gelding by Scorpion. Um, you go Nico de Boinville is on this one for Nikki Henderson. This horse is coming out of the King George on Boxing Day, his most recent outing, three miles, where he finished seventh by 37 lengths. You know, he just did not have the best of trips, had a few mistakes, and he just he just didn't show himself. But something I've noticed, this horse doesn't run his best races at the beginning of the jumping season. He does a lot better towards the end of the season. He's We're at the end of the season right now, and I think he's going to be sitting on a good race. Before then, the Betfair Chase, again, a Haydock, beginning of the season, he finished fifth by 29 lengths, and that's the even, even money favorite. He just did not show up. And then before that, in the bowl chase at Aintree, he won by seven. He jumped well and had a very good run. And then this horse ran this race last year. He finished second by two and a half lengths behind Native River. Native River just had the better run in, but this horse jumped, you know, a, a great race, I think, for a decent second place finish. At 15-1, to he's a horse. I think he's going to run a decent race also. So I'll go to the bank on him also. A horse definitely want to use in the place pod. But to recap my selections now for the fourth from Sheltonham, the 330, it's the grade one Sheltonham Gold Cup. Going to use the uh, three horse Bell Shield here. I'll use the five horse Clans Days of O, and I'll use the eleven horse Might Pay. So I'll go three, five, eleven here. I'll put them all into an exact box, but I'll definitely use them in the place pot. So we're gonna skip over race number five, the 310, or excuse me, the 410 from Sheltonham, and we're gonna head over to race number six now. Race number six to 450 from Sheldon. It is the grade three grand annual handicap chase. It's grade three event going for class one horses, going for a purse of $141,000. Race for five-year-olds and upwards. Field of 22 horses. The 21 and 22 are all swelledables or reserves. So only 20 can go. 
the distance of ground of 3,200 meters or two miles over the chase course. Top selection here. Um, well, I'm not going to give you a top selection. I'm going to give you two horses that I think can win. Like the previous races, I'll put them into an exact box or a forecast box, but I'll definitely use them in the place pot. The two horses I would use here is the two horse Gino Trail and the five horse Abundoran. So two five here, put them in the exact and place pot. But the, the but the first horse we we'll talk about is two horse Gino Trail. Um, this 20 to one shot, 12 year old gun by um, Peguano, Peruguano here. Uh, Richard Johnson gets the leg up. Uh, on this one for Kerry Lee. The horse's most recent outing came the uh, 16th of February at Wincanton. Two miles in a class two handicap chase. The horse finished second by four and a half lengths, and this horse is carrying a tremendous weight on her back, or on his back, th you know, carrying 172 pounds, the highest in the race. It just lacked that good kick at the end. I think it was because the weight. I think carrying um, 165 today, which is still quite high in this group, but, um, you know, I, I think this horse just get around, around the ba race course with a lower weight today than the last time out. Before that, Sand on the 2nd of February, 2 miles, uh, excuse me, mile 15, 16, so just under 2 miles in a class 2 handicap chase. The horse finished second by 4 lengths. It was the horse's first off the break, and the horse jumped well, had a decent turn of foot, got around sand or, to sand down, which is a very difficult place to jump around, and then at an entry, 2 miles in the grade 3 red run handicap chase. He finished third by 21 lengths, and uh, you know, he, he just kind of weakened out of it. The two in front of him just ran those much better races, and then this horse ran this race last year and finished second by two by 4.5 lengths. He jumped well, he, he but he was just weakened out of it at the end, just couldn't keep up, but he was off a little bit of a longer layoff. I think today, even with the heavy weight, he's come to the race a lot better, and I think he'll really run well. So 20 to 1, I'll definitely use him. Another horse you definitely want to use in the place pot, along with the 15 horse Bundurin, the 8 year old gelding here by Chanteau. Patty Brennan gets leg up for Tom George. The horse's most recent appearance came the 15th of December here at Sheltonham, two miles in a handicap chase, class two. He finished second by three and a half lengths there. He jumped well, just lacked a little closing kick, but he got around the race course well. Again at Sheltonham, two miles in a class two handicap chase. He won by eight lengths back in November, and he just won, jump, jumped and won for fun. It was it was a very good race off the break, and then he ran in the Grade Three Red Rum Chase at uh, Handicap Chase at Aintree last year in Grand National Weekend. He finished fifth by 29 lengths and just weakened out of it. Didn't handle the soft going at Aintree, and then ran at, at Kempton last uh, March and a Class Two Handicap Chase going the extended two and a half miles, where he finished third by three and three quarter lengths there. And again, he just lacks good closing kick. But this horse likes firmer, or drier ground. He's going to see drier ground today, which I think will be the key, and uh, I think will really run well. So at 15 to one, I'll definitely use him. So to recap my selection for the 6th, the 450 from Shell Limits, the Grade 3 Grand Annual Handicap Chase, I'll use the 2-horse Geno Trail, and I'll use the 5-horse Bundoran, so I'll go 2-5 in the Exacto Forecast box, and uh, I'll definitely use them in the place pot. So now let's get to the nightcap from Shell the nightcap from Sheltonham, the seventh race to 5.30. It's the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockey's Handicap Hurdle. It's a Class 2 Conditional Handicap Hurdle going for a purse of $89,500. Race for four-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 26 horses. 25 and 26 are also eligible or reserves. Only 24 could go 4,000 meters or 2.5 miles over the hurdle course. This is the most wide-open race of the afternoon, I think. So I'll give you three horses I think that, that can win and I'll, again, exact a box, or you can put them into the place pot. The three horses I like here are the three horse, if you can say run, or excuse me, if you say run, the eight horse style de Gardi, and the number 10 horse Pim. So three, eight, 10 here in the nightcap from Sheldon. But the first horse to talk about is the three horse, if you say run. Brianni Frost is on this one for Paul Nichols, seven-year-old mare by Mahler. The horse's most recent appearance came three, almost uh, three weeks ago at uh, Haydock. Two miles to eights and a mare's listed hurdle. The horse finished second by a neck, jumped well, you know, just couldn't get the good grunt in, but he got around the race course well on the banding ground. Before that, I asked God on Clarence House Day, and, they, and this horse ran the grade 2 OLBG.com mare's hurdle. The horse finished third by four and a half lengths, and again, closed up well, had a decent turn of foot, definitely stayed that d trip there. And then it kept in on the 26th of November, three miles and one sixteenth in mare's hurdle. At the longer distance, again, she stayed well. She finished second by two lengths, jumped well. It was a good effort. And then the horse's last victory came at Wincanton in early November, uh, going a two-mile 5-H trip and a Class 2 handicap hurdle. The horse won by five, and it was a very good um, run that day, even though 
the horse had one slight mistake, but other than that, it was still a very good run. Um, I think here, 20 to 1, she's come to this race well, and I think she's uh, live. Also, along with the 8 horse style that they guard, um, gets um, Ned Curtis up for Nikki Henderson, a 5 year old gun by Cap Gars here. The horse's most recent out came the 6th of February at Ludlow, 2 miles of novice chase class 4. The horse been second by 2.5 lengths there, and just never had a good turn of foot, never stayed, and it just wasn't the day to win. Um, you know, the horse has run better races at the longer trip, so maybe he just didn't like the shorter trip there. It just wasn't the day to win. Before that, taunted on the 9th of January, two miles three eighths in a class three handicap hurdle. The horse finished second by one quarter lengths there, and uh, he jumped well. Again, lacked a little at the end, but he got around the race course well, and then he ran at Harryford over the bigger obstacles in a two-mile novice chase, where he didn't finish. He did, he just didn't start that day. Um, you know what can you say? And then before that, in a beginner's chase at Harryford, two miles of uh, he he won by seven lengths with the low weight. He jumped well and just went away with it. I think back to the smaller obstacles game, the two and a half miles. I think he's another horse at fifteen one. I'll use here, and I think he's can definitely get in the place pot along with the ten horse pin. Ten to one here gets um. Uh, and gets uh, Patrick up in the saddle for Nikki Henderson. The horse's most recent out came the 20th of January at Kempton. Uh, two miles, five eighths of a class four novice hurdle. The horse won by a neck net, 62 cents a dollar. This horse was under the drive for the final few fences, but he held on. It was a, a decent run there. Before then, the grade two Ballymore novice hurdle at Sheldon, two miles, five eighths, November the 16th. He stayed well. He finished second by three and a quarter lengths there. Jumped well. You know, it was a decent effort. And then an Ascot in November, two miles in a class three novice hurdle. He finished second by two and a quarter lengths there. He was under the drive most of the race, and he got second out of the default. It wasn't the best race of the for him. It was probably his worst race as, as of recently. And then before that, at Chapstow, two miles in a National Hunt Novice Hurdle, the horse won by two, and he jumped well and just went away with it. Another horse is a good weight here, and I think he's a live horse, so I'll def definitely use him. So to recap my selection for the 7th, the 530 from Sheltonham, it is the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockey's Handicap Hurdle. I'll use the 3-horse If You Say Run. I'll use the 8-horse Style the Guardy, and I'll use the 10-horse Pin. So I'll go 3, 8, 10. I'll put them all into an exact or forecast box and definitely use them in the place pond. So good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. And also join me in a few weeks' time for the Dubai World Cup and also the start of the British flat season. And also the Grand Nationals just around the corner also.